Today we're going to be talking about some first world problems about owning a Lord truck. So stay tuned. So one of the biggest problems that I'm finding about having a lower truck isn't anything to do with the ride quality. It's nothing to do with the fact that, you know, you got to watch yourself over speed bumps or scraping over low because I don't do that with this truck. I don't scrape. It rides really well. The problem I have are little things like getting underneath the truck to do things like adjusting the pinion angle on that rear differential. So, I may have mentioned before that in, uh, in a video that since I have had this truck and since I've lowered it and been driving it, I do have a little bit of a shake uh, at higher speeds. Uh, I've chalked it up to not being the balance in the tires, but likely that pinion angle because it is kind of off kilter a little bit, pointing up a little bit too far. So we've got to get that adjusted, but I can't do that unless all the weight of the truck is sitting on the suspension. So what we're going to do today is we are going to build some blocks, some cribbing so to speak, to set this truck up on so that we can roll under it with the creeper and make some of those adjustments. So right now we're on our way to the lumber yard to pick up some materials. And did I mention it's May the 9th and it snowed today? Even in Canada that's unusual. Crazy. So even though we've got this truck lowered, it's still a truck, so I went to the lumber yard and got everything that we needed to put this uh, project together, and then some. You see, it's Mother's Day weekend, and we're building something for my wife as well. That won't be in this video. We're going to get uh, focused on this one. Basically what we've got here is we've got about a dozen economy studs that we're going to be cutting down to about a foot and a half for each level. We don't want these things to be so big and heavy that we can't carry them around um, because we do have to move them and have a place to store them. So I'm going to make them so that they are stackable and we'll get some exact measurements once we figure out the exact dimensions of the tires that will be sitting on them. So. I'm going to go get the uh, chop saw set up and then we'll come back and figure out what those dimensions are and get to cut. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make these this cribbing so that a 10 inch wide wheel and tire setup can set on top of them and still be safe. Now on the old Mopar here these front wheels are only 8 inches and when you take a measuring tape to them. With the tire sticking out and bulging is roughly about nine inches. So I think the idea here is if we cut the cribbing to be probably somewhere in the 12 inch, uh, that means it's going to be a foot square and we'll take them up about a foot. That gives us lots of clearance to be able to jack the truck up, set it down in the cribbing and give us probably a couple of feet to slide underneath the truck. Depending on how much wood we have, we may go a little bit taller, but for now I think we're going to use 12 inches as our measurement. But before we go and cut all of them, I'm going to make one square and then test it and see if I think that's going to fit. If not, we may have to go further, maybe 14 or 16 inches to see uh, if they're going to fit. So let's do a test cut and we'll go from there. So this is exactly what I wanted to be able to see before I went and cut all those up. Now I had some scrap pieces of two by four kicking around uh, that I've been using for jacking the truck up. So each one of these is 12 inches long and when we stack them together in the configuration that we want for the cribbing it doesn't give us a whole lot here for the tire to sit in. I think it will be sufficient uh, but it's also not very wide. Again when I measured it it looked like 9 inches was what the width of that wheel is. On an 8 inch rim so a 10 will probably measure 11. This may not quite be big enough so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit to going a couple of inches wider therefore the whole piece will be that much bigger and you got to remember those 10 inch wheels that are going to be in the back on Dale are going to be quite wide uh, so the footprint's going to be there we want to make sure we got enough footprint to be able to handle 
uh, that tire and the weight of the truck. So I'm going to go start cutting up a few more, uh, a little bit bigger, and uh, we'll get them put together for you. And this project will be done. So uh, let's get to measuring and cutting. Okay, so now that we've got all this wood all cut up and we've woken up the neighbors, it's time to put the screws to it and not because I'm trying to piss it off, but uh, so that we can get these blocks built. We're going to have four of them. They're going to be a foot high and they should be about eight levels tall. So we're going to get out the bag of deck screws. We're going to start putting this thing together and we'll see how everything turns out. And I do have two more 2x4s left over. If I wanted to, I can get six more pieces out of it, which is three layers high per stack. So we'll see how this works first. Then we'll come back to this and we might use those as well. So there we are. We've got one more level to go and that should put us right at 12 inches and uh, I think that one more row will be enough to get the truck lifted up so that we can get underneath of it with a creeper. So I'm going to put that last one on and build the other three and I'll be right back with you. Okay so we've got our cribbing built and it's sitting right here on the floor all four pieces. We're going to load them up in the back of the truck and we're going to head out to the shop get the truck up on the hoist and lower it down on the cribbing and we'll show you exactly what this is meant to do. Okay, it is the next day. We are out here at the shop and we're about ready to get the truck up in the air so we can set it back down on jack stands. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be doing while we're underneath of it. So there's two things that we're gonna be doing while we're underneath the truck today. Uh, that won't be in this video, it'll be in the next one. But let me give you a sneak peek of what to expect. So one of the things that we've got to fix is our pinion angle. Our pinion is pointing up way too far. It's got to be brought down so that the pinion is in line with the drive shaft when everything is sitting properly. That's why we've got to get the truck sitting on its own weight, which means we've got to get the U-bolts out on both sides or at least loosened up so that we can pivot the axle down. What's preventing us from doing that is this kit from Belltech has these little tabs that sit right up into this old spring perch and we're going to have to cut a little bit off of it so that we can get the angle that we need for it to tilt forward. The other thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to be taking this spring pack apart and putting that one spring in that I took out of this side because if you remember we had a broken one so I took the broken one out and took the matching spring out of this side uh, so that they would sit level. Well, that seemed to have messed things up. This side sits a little bit lower than this side, so we are gonna put that spring pack back in here and button everything up, and then we can get our angle adjusted. But for now, we're gonna get this thing down on the cribbing so you guys can see the fruits of our labor yesterday and show you exactly what it's meant to do. So there we have it. We've got the truck sitting down on the cribbing and we've got ourselves quite a bit of distance so that we can kind of crawl under there and do the work that we need to do. Over here, we'll just be able to put those arms down and swing them out of the way that gives us some room to get in on the creeper. But this is exactly what I was hoping for. We're gonna work with it today and see if the one foot uh, in height is gonna be enough to work with. 
If not, we can always go back and cut up those extra two by fours and add a few more inches. So that is gonna do it for this episode, guys. I hope you can uh, stick around for the second one, the follow-up to getting the suspension and the pinion angle set up on the truck for, for good, hopefully. Uh, we are still expecting our wheels and tire package to come in sometime soon. I can't wait to reveal that to you guys. A couple of housekeeping items. One, the bumper to bumper challenge is still on. All the rules are in the description box below. This is a challenge that I've expressed to you guys with Grant Tommy, who is straight six fan. I'll put his link right here. We're trying to get my buddy Kip from America Bumper to Bumper to 1,000 subscribers, and we're hoping that your participation in the bumper to bumper challenge is gonna help us do that. Basically all we're doing is getting you to list all the vehicles you've ever owned with pictures. And like I said, maximum five minute video and the rules are listed down below. And I'm pretty excited to see some of the vehicles that you guys have to offer. I'll be even more excited if you guys take the opportunity right now to click that subscription button and the bell notification and subscribe to my channel because it would really really make me happy. We're trying to get to 5,000 subscribers so we can blow up another car. I can't do it without you guys, so if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, please go ahead and do so now. I'm also extending the invitation out to you guys that if you've got a ride that you want to show off and become a feature on my channel, the information is down below. You can send me your ride and I will make it a feature and show everybody on my channel in hopes to get the word out about what you have to offer and we've had some submissions come in already, and I'm looking forward to putting that video together. Also stay tuned for Saturday's upload. It's going to be my 400th video that I've uploaded since I've been doing YouTube. And well, I've asked a few friends if they could help celebrate. So you're not gonna wanna miss it. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys, God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.